So in this video, we're going to talk about SQL injection attacks. So SQL, or some people pronounce it SQL, is the um, basically the, the query language used to talk to databases. And it's used to create database entries, access them, delete them, modify them, you know, the rest of it. So a SQL injection attack will um, be present or be possible, a vulnerability will be there if the um, programmer uses the user supplied input as part of the database query and does it in an unsafe way. So what that will allow an attacker to be able to do is to basically craft malicious input that will modify the um, actual SQL query that gets sent to the database. So it's a common architecture. Um, you know, the majority of websites are based on SQL databases. There are, you know, other backends and things like NoSQL and, um, you know, things like that that are used in some, in some places. But the majority of websites have a SQL database that backs the, the database. So that's where all the information gets stored. So all the information about users and their passwords is stored in the database. All of the things like forum uh, messages, entries, and you know, blog posts, all of that stuff is in the database. And um, so all of the con all the interesting content is basically stored in the database. And then it gets, uh, every time someone uses the website, the website will basically generate queries that get sent to the database to extract all the information that it needs in order to um, work, basically. So it will send a query to the database to check that the user is in the database and they've got their password correct, for example might send a query to the database to check um, you know, if the user's account's enabled, it will, it will retrieve information from the database of like what to display to the user. So things like um, you know, the, all the content that gets inside that website that, gets, uh, that needs to be viewed. So an example of an unsafe way to write a database query would be to basically construct the query just using a string. So if you construct the query like this, uh, so we've basically we're saying the query equals, so we're going to select the first name and the last name from users where the user ID is like the ID that's been supplied by the user. Now, as a, as a SQL query, that is perfectly fine the vast majority of the time, unless, depending on what this is, if that is actually just an ID, then this could be some safe code and it would work fine. But if they are, if that is user supplied, that variable name, then they can start putting something in that you're not expecting. So if they, for example, enter as their input this, um, oh, sorry, this. So if, if they set the ID parameter to send um, inverted comma. So then that closes off this. So remember, basically, you have to imagine that all the user input is being inserted into this space here. So what you end up with is this query that says select user from user where user ID equals um, like blank or one equals one is what you'll end up with if that's what they enter in. Um, so you end up with this as the query, as the final query. So it's important when you're doing and you're looking for SQL injection attacks and things like that, is to try and picture what the original query might have been that you're inserting into. Uh, and part of the problem solving will be like, are you in the context of like a single quote or a double quote? So here, uh, you know, we start start with a single quote. That will only work if the SQL command here had a single quote to start. If there was a double quote, then you would need to send a double quote. If there were no quotes, then you, um, like if it was exam uh, expecting a number, for example, then you would not need the quote at all, um, that first quote. Um, and you would need one at the end there as well. So there's just some, and that, that's really, it's just a bit of problem solving to try a few of those sorts of things. So, you know, when you're doing hacking challenges and CTF challenges and things like that, and you come across a SQL um, injection possibility, then those are some, some of the sorts of things to look for and to try. 
So, you know, the way the attacker can do it is just simply, um, you can just enter it in um, as like question mark, ID equals, and then you enter in, enter in and it gets sent through and sends that query through. Uh, and, that, and in that case, um, it will return uh, the details of all the users. So let's let's have a look. So this is selecting um, All right, so let's have a look at down vulnerable level. Uh, okay, so if we were looking up a um, user ID, and this is basically allowing us to do a lookup against the, the users in here. And this is already like, obviously a website wouldn't normally let everyone see all the different users, but um, it's just returning the information about one user. But you could imagine, so if the query is um, that the number is a string, then we might try like ending the string um, and type like or um, one equals one. Um, and we could leave that final quote off because if it's being wrapped in a single quote, start with so I'll just copy that let's just see whether or not that works yes so um, so because basically it's the, the query has worked it's not um, basically it's return tree for every user and so therefore instead of just showing us the one user it's showing us all of them and we can have a look at the source code here and have a look at how they actually do generate it so it's this is exactly the kind of um, you know the, um, thing that we're talking about in the slides. So you know we've got where the user ID equals user ID in um, quotes. And if that hadn't worked, then we might try something like using double quotes um, or no quotes at all. So if we set uh, the damn vulnerable web app security level to medium, uh, we can kind of see an example of the um, context um, being important. So in this case, it's uh, just it's a drop down for a number. And um, in this case, what's getting sent uh, along is a number which is um, Um, which is treated on the server side with, without uh, without quotes because the way you write SQL queries with numbers as opposed to strings is to just use the uh, variable name. So if we um, go ahead and intercept that and we modify it, we can uh, if we tried with the strings again, it wouldn't work. Uh, in order to work, we need to do um, like without the strings, without the um, quotes. And if we do that, then we will succeed in our um, attack. If we want to do it again and just see what it looks like if we, if it, when it doesn't work, uh, we might want to do this, this is, uh, and see whether that works. Uh, and you can see that actually it creates a SQL query on the server side instead. Um, so, a well, um, you know, when you give database error messages to users, that also makes it easier for attackers to try and figure out um, how to get an attack to work against your website. So, when you um, do manage to get some database queries happening on the server, um, then you've got you need to know a little bit of SQL code in order to extract the information that you want as an attacker or modify things or get information about the database out. So what you can do is um, get the like the database version out of um, in your query or the database 
or um, you know you can get the user that's running uh, you can get information about all the tables that are in the database that can be helpful so that you can write queries to do things like this where you can actually get the the um, uh, like column get the list of columns in a table and then you can you know start extracting out the information so um, uh, what you can do is use a union so that you can start adding your own um, code to it. So what a union does is it basically combines the results of multiple um, select statements, um, but you do have to have the same number of matching columns on the um, the union, the, you know, the second select statement. But basically this will say, okay, well, we got this select query. Now add on this other select query into the output. So let's have a look at this. Um, example with our um, let's see um, I'll just go and set this back down so I don't have to modify the queries um, but we can use this query and then what we find is that the actual database um, version is displayed to us. So that could be useful to know. You know, it's important to know if you what kind of database you're dealing with. Uh, and here we can do things like extracting the schema. Uh, and then we get all this information about all the different um, tables that are in this database and um, you know we've got users, guest book and a whole bunch of other things that are used inside the database. So yeah so you can see the way this works is it's basically getting out all the user information and doing another select statement and so you know we see the first ones that come back are the um, the normal users, and then we start seeing all the databases because it's a union using a union to add to the end of that to that data set that's coming back um, our own new query, which is to extract the information about tables. And here's the other example that is extracting out the um, Usernames and passwords. So in this version, we're extracting out usernames, um, which you can see here, which obviously can be quite useful and important, and also extracting out um, passwords, which in this case is stored. Um, you know that looks like an MD5. Um, hash, so you know you can be easy to recognize those once you've you know, seen them enough times. Um, and you know, because we already know the username and password for admin, we know that's password. So that hash is just going to be so common that we you'll li literally, if you Google that hash, it will just tell you that that is password. It's an MD5 for password. But if you're using a password cracker, you can um, attempt to kind of like do a dictionary attack. Uh, or other kind of brute force attack or whatever to try and um, you, you know find what the passwords are for these hashes. So sometimes the results from a query don't actually get displayed to the user, um, but they could still be vulnerable to attack. So an example of that is blind SQL um, requires the attacker to basically ask true for true false questions of the database and try and deduct the answers. Um, so you can deduct the answers based on like response content. So if there's the presence of an error message, for example, or timing. So you know if you basically write a query that will take a long time if the answer is true and a very short time if the answer is false or the other way around, then you can use that to figure out what's in the database even if you don't actually are given the information directly. 